I'm Rear Admiral Thomas M. Dykers, retired. You've just heard part of a tape recorded on a submarine during an actual battle. It is the only one I know of made during World War II. How this recording was made and the historic event it documents for us is to be recreated in this true and authentic story. September 1944, when Sea Lion II returned to Pearl Harbor, she received a well-deserved welcome. Led by Commander Eli T. Rich of New York City, Sea Lion had sunk six cargo ships in a mine layer in her first two patrols. Rich was justifiably proud of his reputation as a skipper of a hot ship with a hot crew. Nice work, Eli. Welcome home. Thank you, sir. Good to see you, boy, as always. Thank you, Captain Bogey. Things seem to be picking up. Jim McNamara says he got a battleship. Radio just came in. That's great. That's wonderful for Jim, too. Three weeks later, Sea Lion's refit was complete. Captain Rich and his executive officer, Lieutenant J.S. Bryant of Pasadena, California, found her ship shape and ready for her third patrol. Any idea where they're going to send us, sir? No. Captain Vogue wants to see me this morning. Put in a pitch for a decent area, will you? Some place where they get some of that heavy stuff? You mean like McNamara? Oh, yes, sir. How do you like that guy's luck? The first battleship of the war. Mac's pretty unhappy. He hasn't had confirmation yet. Yeah, I imagine he's really sweating it out. I was there, Captain. I know what I saw. Mac, believe me, I'm on your side. I'd like to tell the world that you sank a battle wagon, but intelligence insists it was a heavy cruiser. Well, intelligence is wrong. Yes? Commander Rich is here, sir. Send him in. Intelligence has been wrong, yes. But in this case, they've come up with an accounting of every battleship in the Japanese Navy. I want you to listen to this, Eli, and pass it on to your officers. Well, it was too big to be a heavy cruiser. Intelligence will reverse itself. Mac, for your sake and mine, I hope so. The next time you think you've sunk a battleship, you come back here with a ship's log. Or the captain's pants. It would help if the captain were in them. Proof is what we need. I don't care what kind. What's so distressing about sinking a heavy cruiser? Well, nothing, but well, you know how it is. I can only wish you better luck next time. Thank you, sir. I know just how he feels. With a big ship like that, fleet headquarters is real tough. Remember that. I haven't seen anything heavier than a destroyer escort. Where are those big wagons operating? Why? A hot ship like Sea Lion deserves a hot area. How many times a day do I hear that? Everybody wants a hot area. Yes, sir. And you didn't call me in to give me a patrol briefing? Not ready for that yet, Eli. But I did call you in for something. Oh, it blasted all this business with McNamara's ruined the whole morning. Oh, yes, here it is. Called you in about taking a war correspondent on your next patrol. He's been after me for weeks. It's his neck. Glad to have him. Fine. He's waiting outside. Hmm? Oh. Send Mr. Howard in. He wants to tape record what goes on during a battle. All right with you? I think so. Good morning, Captain Pogey. Mr. Howard, this is Commander Rich. He's agreed to take you along on the Sea Lion's next patrol. He leaves within a week. Thank you, Commander. Did you say Sea Lion, Captain? Yes, Sea Lion the second. Oh, then it was the first sea line that was sunk in Manila Bay. That's right. The first of our submarines sunk in this war. They got us with two direct hits. We were all below decks when it happened. Lucky to get out. It was your ship, sir? Commander Rich was one of my officers. Is that right? I hate to use the word, but there's a sentimental angle here. Make a good story. You'll be in excellent hands, Mr. Howard. I'll let you know when I'm ready for your briefing, Eli. Aye, aye, sir. Thank you, Captain. Cigarette, 
Commander. No, thank you. Captain Vogie seemed a little annoyed. Does the word sentimental bother him that much? No, he's got something else on his mind. Huh? He's disturbed about a battleship that hasn't been sunk. Any other of the old Sea Lion's crew on your roster? Oh, yes, quite a few. Several junior officers, the chief of the boat. Look, kid, you're not waving to a girl or something. You know, when you, when you put up your hand, raise it high, because they can't see it next to your shoulder. Yeah, like this. <laughs> Hey, wait a minute. There goes my skipper over there. See you later, Junior. Hi, Captain. I was standing here waiting for Gorski when I saw that kid in a little trouble. You know me when it comes to directing traffic. Mr. Howard, this is Sea Lion Chief of the boat, J. Lewis Utz. Mr. Howard's going with us on our next patrol. Oh, that's great, sir. I understand you were chief of the boat of the first Sea Lion. Sure was. When we got back here from Manila, I was sent to the base for duty. Captain Rich saw me directing traffic one day, and I didn't even know there was another sea lion until he came out in the middle of the street and pulled me off shore patrol. <laughs> That's just how it happened. Mind if I use that in one of my dispatches? Well, you sure can. It's us, UTZ. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> huh? What are you looking at them for? They're wearing pants. Ah. Hey, Gorski, you see that war correspondent? He's going with us on patrol. So? So? So we get publicity, Stoop. Oh, who cares? Who cares? Well, I hope he spells my name right. Only three letters, but nobody gets it right. Hutz. Gesundheit. Three days later, Sea Lion was made part of a wolf pack joining the USS Keith. They were to patrol the most dangerous area in the Pacific, a heavily traveled route with three important hazards. The water, for the most part, was shallow. From Kyushu to the northern tip of Formosa lay a solid string of mines. The wolf pack was to get inside to patrol between the China coast and the minefields. It was an area in which the Japanese had suffered a heavy toll of shipping, and from which more than one submarine had failed to return. Sea Lion left Pearl Harbor November 1st, 1944, in company with the Keith. It wasn't long before her problems began. Correspondent Howard suffered a severe attack of recurrent malaria and debarked at Midway for hospitalization. I can work it fine, Mr. Howard. Sure is nice of you to let us borrow. When we get into action, Mr. Schuler will handle the tape. I'll be waiting at Pearl for you. Good luck. How do you like them potatoes? He was gonna write a whole story about me, a story for my hometown paper. Now he's sick. What are you gonna do? All that nice publicity, gone. I know how you can get your name in the papers. Yeah, how? Drop dead. Ha, <laughs> <laughs> ha. Permission to come on the bridge. Permission granted. Radio from the keep. Having engine trouble. Have to turn back to Midway. Looks like we're gonna have the patrol area all to ourselves. Torpedo. Looks like tube number six. They testing firing circuits? Yes, sir. Scrum one. Must have gone right through the outer door. Lieutenant Romano, to the bridge. Can't tell much. Out of doors, bent like a busted nose, Captain. Any way to fix it? Nothing we can do when we get back to the base, sir. I'm sorry, sir. I'll take all the blame. There's an accident, Romano. Sure, I hate to lose the torpedo, but the worst part of it is if we have to dive over 300 feet, the pressure on the inner door of that tube is liable to buckle it. Yes, sir. I don't think we'll be able to take much of a dust charge either. Let's just hope we don't have to test it. Yes, sir. 
sea lion continued the patrol alone. On November 11th, she made a gun attack on a small armed vessel. Her shells landed close but never hit, and the ship managed to escape. Seven days, no worthwhile target was sighted. Anything interesting, Bates? Just the usual fishing junks and sampans, Captain. Let's have a look. Left bull rudder. Left bull rudder. Anything wrong, sir? No. Not now. We just eased past the floating mine. All stop. All stop. Pass the word. All compartments report damage. Aye, aye, sir. Now all compartments report damage. Hydrogen explosion, number one torpedo tube. I'll be in the forward torpedo room. Right, sir. <coughs> Close that door. We better fire the torpedoes, sir. We have another hydrogen explosion that might detonate us. Make the number one tube ready for fire. Starting tower, this is the captain. All back full. All back full. Ready, Captain. You sure you got the outer door open this time? Yes, sir. All right, get rid of it. Fire! The dangerous torpedo was ejected, and morale was commencing to sag around the edges. Come on in, sit down. You look kind of down in the mouth at dinner tonight. What's wrong? You know, Jim, I've heard other skippers gripe about the one patrol when everything went bad. I'm afraid we're having ours now. No, it hasn't been that bad. Uh, it might get worse. We're lucky the correspondent got sick. What a story he'd have. Let's call us the USS Snafu. Self-inflicted damage, hydrogen explosion, the fight with that trawler we couldn't even sink. Uh, nothing unusual. I know. <laughs> It's just that we had such great expectations. I keep visualizing our return to Pearl. Band playing, Admiral and Captain Vogie waiting to greet us. What kind of a patrol did you have, Commander? <laughs> That's the moment I'm dreading. Well, we still got ten days left. We ought to find lots of targets in close to Formosa here. Yeah. If we just start like we'll run aground. Well, get a good night's sleep, Captain. You feel better in the morning. Shortly after midnight, November 21st, the tricks of fate that had badgered the sea lion began to multiply. Here, Jim, take a look for yourself. Extreme range, Mr. Bryant. Well, my navigation must be off. Those large pips look like land. No, it's on the fuss. Jim, check your position. Excuse me, sir, but that's not land. Must be land. I've never seen a pip as large as that. Those six smaller pips are on the big one, sir. If it's land, we're tracking it at 060 at 16 knots. I figured two battleships, two cruisers, and four destroyers, sir. What's a normal approach course? 350, sir. Bring it right to 350, all ahead full. Bring it right, 350, all ahead full. Hey, Captain, it's kind of wet up on the bridge. Think you ought to change into your uniform? Huh? <laughs> Jim, I'm going to try to make this run entirely on the surface. Isn't that kind of dangerous with all those escorts? We'll have to take a chance. If we die, they'll be able to go around us. Besides, I want to see what we're shooting at. Remember McNamara? Yes. Two battleships. You realize what an opportunity this is? Get at least one of them or bust. Should we send out a report on enemy contact? Yeah. 
Tell them we've cited two BBs, two CAs, and four DDs. Uh, shouldn't the word apparent be used since the sighting's only on radar? Why? Bogey doesn't want an affidavit. Uh, on second thought, Jim, maybe you'd better hold up that report. Don't send out anything until we make sure what we've got. All right, sir. Just remembered something Bogey told me. No use taking chances. Captain, do I have permission to report the battle? Wait till we're within 10,000 yards before you turn it on. Aye, aye, sir. Any change in course? On course 060, sir, 16 knots. Range 20,000 yards, bearing 273. Good. I'll take the car now. All right, sir. Great. 10,000 yards, closing fast. Well. Jets, if we're not tracking battle wagons, you better start swimming. It's got to be, Mr. Romano. Or at least two aircraft carriers. You see anything? No, sir. 5,000 yards from escort. Keep a sharp lookout. Aye, aye, sir. Range 4,000, bearing 261. What target are you tracking? First battleship. What's the range to destroyer escort? 3,000, bearing 359. Captain, that destroyer is dead ahead. Can you see him? Visibility under 1,000 yards. Can't see a thing. Destroy off the port bow. Visual contact on first destroyer. Change target to destroyer. She may have seen us. Make ready all torpedo tubes. Set depth at eight feet. Range, 1,800 yards. No change in bearing. She's overlapping battleship. Wait a minute, Jim. She's passing ahead. Doesn't see us. That leaves that battleship wide open. Commence firing as soon as you're ready. Stand by. Range, 3,000. Bearing, 348. Range, 3,000. Bearing, 348. Set. Attack from the east, sir. We got three hits on the first target. What's your speed? No change, sir. What? Old task force is still doing 16 knots. Jim, did we change the depth settings on those torpedoes? No. We mackerel, they're still set for the destroyers. Three hits and they haven't even changed speed. All we did was dent the armor belt. Yeah. This one's on me. Things were going too easy. What's the range? 8,000 and opening, sir. Run parallel to those babies. We're going in there again. Right. It's been an hour and a half. If we can't catch them, they must be in pretty good shape. Maybe we'd better get off on a contact report, sir. I'll go ahead and send it. At least Pearson said he saw a pagoda superstructure. Did you see it, sir? <laughs> right now, I'm almost ready to say I did. I don't understand it, Jim. 
We hit something with that stern salvo. Well, maybe it was one of the destroyers. Captain here. Captain, we've got a break. They're splitting up. The first battleship is slowed to 12 knots. Come on. Pearson. Yes, sir. When you saw that pagoda superstructure, couldn't have been your imagination, could it? No, sir, I'm pretty sure. Not positive? I'm sure as I could be under the circumstances, sir. Captain, what was that? Are we hit? Jim, full speed ahead. Let's go after that other battleship. One down and one to go. <laughs> after chasing the enemy for 22 hours, heavy seas forced the sea lion to give up. She returned to the area of the explosion to search for survivors or some other evidence of the destroyed vessel. Lots of oil, but not a shred of wreckage. Mr. Bates, please come to the bridge. I want to send a radio message to ComSub PAC. The question is, what did we sink? A battleship. You said yourself. Yeah, where's the proof? I told you what Captain Bogey said. Well, let's keep looking. The sea lion was to find a search fruitless. She resumed her patrol and a week later headed back to Pearl Harbor. Well, it won't be long now. Maybe we'll find out what we sank. Every man's been biting his nails. Never saw such a bunch of nervous Nellies. If it was a battleship, we'll be the first. If it wasn't, we'll be the second Jim McNamara. Nice going, Eli. Welcome home. Thank you, sir. Good to see you. I imagine you're all anxious to know that you sank a destroyer. And confirmation is in on the battleship. It was the Congo. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're very glad to hear that, sir. Come below, you can tell us all about it. Yes, sir. Hey, great, huh? Great one. Did it. I'll be back in a moment with our special guest. I'd like you to meet the real-life skip of our story. Now, Commander Submarine Squadron 8, Captain Eli Rich. Eli, the incidents leading up to the sinking of the Congo must have given you a few gray hairs. A few? I think the rough weather probably prevented our being seen by the escorts. Well, how does it feel to plug a battleship and have it go sallying off like nothing had happened? It was a pretty dark moment. I had a, a submariner's dream come true and uh, I thought I'd blown it. Well, attacking capital ships on the surface like a torpedo boat while dodging escorts in a raging sea is reason enough to miss some of the things that happened. I'll have to admit there were, was quite a few things going on at that time. The main thing is that you got the Congo and in one of the most courageous attacks of the war. Congratulations to you and the fine ship's company of the Sea Lion. Thank you very much. Be with us again when the silent service brings you another true and exciting submarine story. Take your dogs and off to fly Through the deep blue underneath the ocean We'll control the ocean wide From down, down underneath the sea Take the course for past the world Oh, 
Mann, wenn ich nur sehe.